Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. This is the first video in a series of experiments with a high voltage capacitor bank. In this first video, I will show you how to make the connections in order to have your bank. And in forthcoming videos, we will make several experiments with this bank. We have a lot of energy that can be stored here that can be released in a fraction of a second. And several interesting experiments can be performed with this bank. The capacitors that I use for the capacitor bank are these photoflash capacitors from this circuit of a camera, disposable camera. It is the flash circuit. Here you can see the flash. If you are uh, less than 30 years old, you did not know these cameras. Before cell phones, you need to use a camera to take photographs. So you could buy a disposable camera, take your pictures, then take the, the camera to a developing house. They develop and print your photographs and the camera was used uh, went to the trash. So you could go and ask for the used cameras and you could get these circuits for free or very, very cheap. They have uh, several components and this high voltage capacitor is 160 microfarads at 330 volts. And they are electrolytic capacitors, but they are special type of capacitor because they can be discharged very very quickly. These capacitors release all the, uh, their energy in a fraction of a second, thereby generating very high power levels. Next time you need a PCB for your electronics project, consider using the professional services of JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the world leader in PCB fabrication. You can order online. You just need to register, upload your Gerber file, and wait a few days for your PCBs at an unbeatable price. In order to make the capacitor bank, first I made these arrangements. There are six of these and each one is eight capacitors in parallel. So one of these is 1280 microfarads at 330 volts. Because remember that capacitors in parallel, the capacitance add up and the voltage remain the same. So we had uh, 160 times eight capacitors it is 1280 microfarads and each capacitor is rated at 330 volts so the total voltage of this arrangement is 330 volts now we can interconnect these different groups in series or parallel or a combination in order to achieve the capacitance and total voltage that we need from our capacitor bank. For example, you can connect two of the groups in parallel and you will double the capacitance for a total of 2560 microfarads with the same voltage, 330 volts. But if you connect two of the groups in series, then you have half the capacitance, 640 microfarads, but double the voltage, 660 volts. I will use a combination of series and parallel connection, two groups in parallel, another two also in parallel, and the remaining two in parallel too, and the three pairs connected in series. This will give a total of 853 microfarads at 990 volts. I now have 
three groups of capacitors. Each one has 16 capacitors and each one is 160 microfarads. So the total is 2560 microfarads at 330 volts. Now, when I connect them in series, the capacitance is divided by three. We will have 853 microfarads and the voltage is multiplied by three, 990 volts. Okay, the three groups are connected in series and we can see that we have a total capacitance of a little bit above 900 microfarads. Strictly speaking, when you connect capacitors in series, you need to add balancing resistors at each capacitor. This is because even if you have capacitors of the same value, they have tolerance, which in the case of electrolytic capacitors is around 10%. So a capacitor rated at 100 microfarads, for example, can be anywhere from 90 to 110 microfarads. So when you charge several capacitors connected in series, they will have different voltages. The capacitor with less capacitance will have more voltage and that voltage can be larger than the maximum rated voltage of the capacitor and it can be damaged. However, in this case, each of the three capacitors, it is actually 16 capacitors in parallel. Therefore, the tolerances cancel out and each group of capacitors have approximately the same value. So there is not a really great need for balancing resistors. Additionally, <clears throat> the use of this bank is to charge it and discharge it almost immediately. Let's check the capacitance of each group. The first one. Is. Around 2.80 millifarads. Let's see the second group. around 2.80 also and the tier one more or less the same value there are some variation 2.78 2.80 2 so each group of capacitors is approximately 2.80 millifarads. The maximum energy that can be stored in this capacitor bank is given by this formula, one half of the capacitance times voltage squared. With the values of our bank, this results in a total energy of 416 joules of energy. This is a lot of energy. If you consider that only 50 joules of energy are needed to stop a human heart, you can notice that these capacitors bank are not a toy. They are very, very dangerous. So you need to take extreme precautions when manipulating these banks. Right now, the bank of course is fully discharged but anyway it is better not to take any risk therefore in the next video i will put it inside a box and also make the connections for charge and discharge and of course make 
the test. That's all for today. Thanks for coming to my channel. If you liked the video, please give it a like and visit my Patreon page. Thanks and see you in the next one.